If you are concerned about such weeds as water hemp and palmer amaranth coming up in your soybeans, and you are really concerned about the fact that there's very few ways of getting rid of it other than walking in your fields with a weed hook. Well, uh, one of the ways that you can reduce what comes up in your beans is to make sure that it's not growing in your corn the year before. Uh, Devin Keister, uh, who was one of the uh, uh, researchers at the University of Illinois uh, working on an advanced degree, is, uh, is working on trying to solve that problem for you. And, uh, Devin, what, uh, what is your research all about in a way of uh, addressing weed control? Weed control. So, um, as you know, Dr. Bilo and the Crop Physiology Lab is all about putting yield and increasing yield in your field. But we know weeds, they do everything in their power to take that yield back. And so my goal is to prevent that, that stealing of yield, and uh, a strong component of that is multiple modes of action for weed pressure. Now, every farmer has at least heard of water hemp. Maybe less have heard about my handy dandy little friend here, uh, Palmer Amaranth. Now you can consider this or think of this as the wicked step cousin of, of water hemp. And as anyone who's dealt with this before knows that this is a pain to deal with. Um, both water hemp and Palmer have incredible ability to develop resistance to the current chemicals that we put out. And so one of the ways to combat this is multiple modes of action, multiple different target sites across different years, whether that's in corn or in beans. And if you don't stay on top of it, if you look back here, you can see this Palmer is as tall as this corn and will continue to keep pace with it throughout the growing season. Uh, this is a nasty weed. And my research is focused on doing everything in the power that we have with the old chemistries, with the new chemistries, combined mechanisms of trying to keep this pressure down, take a, a zero weed approach, and prevent this from even establishing in a field rather than trying to catch back up because it's a hard race to catch up with. That's right, and that's gonna, that's gonna take yield away. Oh yeah. And so I'm not sure how much, but a substantial, it may cut your yield in half. It may, there's, there's plenty of research on it. Um, I've actually got another project going right now where we're looking at weed pressure in, uh, in traditional standard systems, even with progressive systems to see, you know, with, with those different systems, how much is that weed really affecting your yield in that growing season? Okay, now in your research, how did you go about you know, creating it? What, how did you work it so you can get a, a good result at the end? I took a step back and I uh, really took in what my, my advisor, uh, Dr. Dean Reekers, really had uh, captivated me with when I was an undergrad, and that was chemical synergy. That just seemed like a great concept. And so my research started in the greenhouse where I'm looking at group five and group 27 synergy, and I brought that out to the field to see if pre-emergence programs can utilize that combination to help keep these populations that are so foregone on, on developing resistance and keep them under control. Okay, and so is this a first year, second year, third year of your research? Uh, this project that we're sitting in right now is currently on the second year, and um, that high management, low management study is on its first year, but really interested to see what that results in. What have you found out so far? So far, I have found that multiple modes of action provide farmers pr with the best opportunity to overcome, suppress, prevent what we see behind us. Um, that's just, we can't, we can't be relying on single modes of action anymore. It just, it, it causes more of the problem of resistance. These plants, they'll blow right past one mode, or resist, one mode of action. It's gonna take multiple years, multiple chemistries, multiple programs in both corn and soybeans to stay ahead of this. That's what my next question was gonna be. You've done this across both corn and beans. We just happen to be in a corn field. I have not gotten the chance to do this in beans, okay. but with my um, contacts in the weed science right. uh, field, this is exactly the same kind of stuff that's being accomplished in soybeans too, because you can't afford to take a year off from, from weeds like this. They just, they're way too hardy. Okay. Now, you're going to be talking uh, uh, to farmers who attend the Crop Physiology Field Day on August 1st. What, uh, what's the 
What's the message, the take-home message that you're going to leave them with? The take-home message is definitely going to be how we can utilize these multiple modes of action um, in the best way possible so that they can uh, essentially keep that yield in the field, don't give it up to the weeds, and eventually take it into the take it into the, the grain store. <laughs> right. Well, if you've... Uh... If you've got a problem uh, with uh, water hemp and or uh, Palmer amaranth, uh, Devin's presentation is certainly one that you uh, uh, want to uh, make sure that you catch. The date again is August 1st. It's Crop Physiology Field Day. If uh, you want to uh, learn about uh, all the details of attending, uh, look at the University of Illinois Crop Sciences website and uh, for uh, uh, the uh, agronomy field, uh, agronomy section and for the uh, um, uh, crop physiology field day. Uh, it's going to be uh, uh, just south of Champaign, just on the east side of Savoy, at, uh, uh, down at the Extension and Research Center on South 1st Street, uh, beginning at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, registration is not necessary unless you want to make sure that you've got uh, lunch waiting for you, but it'll be a, a great day. It starts at 8.30 in the morning and ends after lunch, and uh, the best part about it is a whole bunch of new researchers uh, that are being minted by Fred Bilo, uh, who are going to be uh, uh, researching questions that you have. They're going to be making presentations on their findings, and uh, you're going to get an opportunity to uh, uh, see some of the folks that you may be consulting with uh, at corporations uh, and uh, agronomic companies uh, in years to come. Thanks for watching. I'm Stu Ellis.